bakers. Halloween is just around the corner, so this week we are making a really fun monster cookie trilogy. And I have some very exciting news. Today is the launch of my new series on Kin Community called Chocolicious. So after this video, make sure you head over there, subscribe, and check out my Death by Chocolate cupcakes. So let's get baking. So we're gonna start out by making our zombie cookies. Now I'm using sugar cookie dough, which I've made in a previous video for Bubble Baby Cupcakes, and I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. For our zombies, you're gonna need a gingerbread man cutter, and kind of like a ribbed scone cutter, and you're gonna see why I'm using this one. So once you have rolled and cut out your gingerbread men, like so, you're gonna take your ribbed cutter, and cut a nice big chunk out of them, just like they've been mauled by something. You can do his leg, you can even do his head. Um. And you can see we use this cutter because it looks like teeth marks. What I like to do with some of them is indent the cookie, but don't pull it all away, so you can kind of give the impression that they've been kind of maimed, but their body is still hanging on. We're gonna pop these guys in the oven, and once they're baked off and cooled, we're gonna decorate them, and they're gonna look amazing. While our zombies are in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and make the glaze, which is gonna be for their faces and for the blood. The glazes that I make are really easy. All they are is icing sugar and a little bit of water. And you just want to add in enough water to get the consistency that you want. And just go little by little, because you don't want to add in too much water. Your glaze has to be thick enough to be able to pipe it for the zombie faces. And there you have it. There's our glaze. Simple. So we're gonna put some of the white into a piping bag to pipe the faces, and we're gonna set some aside to color it red for the blood. To make your blood glaze, add red food colouring until you reach your desired colour. Make sure you get a deep red for added effect. Our cookies have finished baking and they look simply horrifying, but that's a good thing. To draw your zombie faces, cut a tiny hole in your piping bag so it's just enough for you to frost. Now pipe on your zombie's eyes. Give them a mouth. This guy is not happy, but you can't blame him. You can add a variety of expressions to your zombies. And now for the gore. Just spoon on your red glaze to finish them off. This guy lost his legs, so there has to be some blood. After you're done, you will have an army of zombie cookies. If you think these zombie cookies look awesome, wait until you see my meringue bones with blood pudding. For my meringue bones, I'm gonna use my master recipe for raspberry meringues. You guys know how much I love meringue, so I had to put this in here. Simply make your lovely meringue. Put your meringue in a piping bag that is fitted with a small round nozzle. You can pipe your meringue bones by creating a dot and then making the rest of the bone. And then do the same on the other side. Seriously, how cute are these? Make a dot and then create another bone. Your friends are going to love these. When your bones are piped, you're going to bake them in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for around an hour and a half. And they're still going to be lovely and white and dry. I am very excited to share with you guys today that it is the launch of my Chocolicious series with Kin Community. I've joined forces with Kin to bring you the most decadent chocolate recipes that you need for the holidays. So make sure you don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on anything. While your meringue bones are in the oven, we're gonna get started on our blood pudding, which is essentially a red velvet pudding. In heavy bottom saucepan, add in your sugar, cocoa powder, a very important ingredient in red velvet, cornstarch to thicken, Cinnamon, another important ingredient in red velvet, and sometimes it gets forgotten. And salt, because all baking needs salt. Just whisk all these guys together. To this, we're gonna add our wet ingredients. So pour in your milk and whisk it around so you don't get any lumps. Add in your cream and your sour cream. Sour cream or something acidic is a really important part of red velvet. It gives that kind of unique flavor. And then whisk them all together. Turn on the heat to medium and we're going to stand here and whisk it until it starts to thicken and simmer for around two minutes. Our pudding is just about to come to a simmer and you can already feel it kind of thicken. Cornstarch needs to boil to actually activate. Once you start to see it thicken, we're going to cook it for another two minutes and keep on whisking. It's funny because this smells like red velvet but it looks brown so it's kind of tricking your senses a little bit. Our two minutes are up, we're going to take it off the heat. Next add in your vanilla extract and your red food dye, then mix it all together. This is perfect for Halloween. And the best thing is it tastes great too. Next you're going to pass your red velvet pudding through a sieve to get out any little gritty bits. Our meringue bones are out of the oven and they look so sweet. So I'm going to show you a great way how to serve this. I'm serving my blood pudding in a little black bowl that I have that I kind of think looks like a cauldron. But any little mason jar, any little dish you have is perfect. A really nice extra effect, you can drizzle the pudding down the side to make it look like blood spilling out. I think this looks amazing and now I have to make sure it tastes amazing too. Just dunk your meringue bones into the blood sauce. Mmm, 
Yummy. Now for the ultimate monster mouth cookie. Um, mm, they're so good. The monster mouth cookies, I think, are my absolute favorite. And to make them, you need my master recipe for chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna put a link in the description box below for that. For your monster mouth, take two cookies of the same size. Then spread the red glaze we made for the zombie blood. I like to put a little bit extra towards the edges and you'll soon see why. Now spread it on your other cookie. Add your marshmallows around the edges to create the teeth. I like to add them a little bit wonky too for extra effect. You'll want to go all the way around the cookie. Then put on the top and there you have it, a monster cookie full of teeth. How great do these guys look? They are perfect for Halloween and they're so simple because they're just chocolate chip cookies and marshmallows. When you bring all your cookies together, it makes for the ultimate monster trilogy. Um, mm -hmm. They're so good. Puppy. Um. Don't forget to head over to Kin Community, subscribe and check out my Death by Chocolate cupcakes over there. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you back here again next Thursday for more Bigger Boulder Baking.